Can architecture have life? Architecture has always seemed to be lifeless. A design of a building targets solely at the finite and static form that the building would take, be it concrete, clay, or metal. The end products of these materials are permanently set within the prescribed form that the architects have designed. Contrary to the view that architecture ought to be a fixed state of being, the reality is far from that. As buildings are rarely permanent, their condition of physical materials have a lifespan that will degree over time, beginning with the design and ending with the demolition of the building. We not only witness, but also engage in the life cycle of a building, from its birth to growth to maturity, and finally to its death. Therefore, we believe that we should introduce a new way of perceiving architecture, not as a static object, but as a life form with dynamic qualities that morph over time. We are currently investigating an architectural material, mycelium, that is the roots of mushrooms. Mycelium can grow in any dark and humid environment in massive quantities and at an amazing rate. Mushrooms can be grown in two weeks, then they release spores, then they wither. But new roots and mushrooms will grow again. During our investigation, we realized that the life of mycelium became the life of what was built with it. Every stage in the life of mycelium, its birth, growth, and its death, all of them would become part of the architecture. Therefore, our project aimed to revamp architecture into an organism that has a life cycle by incorporating mycelium, an organic living material that has far more dynamic properties than conventional bricks and mortar. So, what is the life of a building built with mycelium? If we describe a building as having life, then we can trace its birth to the creation of its materials. So we start with the birth of mycelium. Using agricultural waste, industrial waste, and low-value residues that we found, we upcycle them using mycelium. To be specific, our basic materials came from organic residues, such as straw, hemp fiber, newspaper, rice, corn, and combine them with spores. Among them, hemp fiber and straw were the best substrates for mycelium to grow. We made mycelium bricks to test its physical properties. Our tests found that mycelium is waterproof, fireproof, and it preserves heat. Mycelium can be self-assembled. The web of fiber that it grows out can adhere to natural materials, containing cellulose and lignin. In comparison with the strength of regular bricks, Mycelium bricks are firmer and less fragile. Mycelium seeks food to sustain, grow, and spread, and this should be taken into account as an integral part of the building itself. In previous mycelium projects, there have been attempts to make mycelium panels and mycelium bricks with plastic molds and steel molds. However, this method didn't consider ways for the mycelium to sustain itself as a living being and instead treated it as if it were a conventional building material with a finite state. Due to the fact that the cellulose that natural plants, such as flax, cotton, and jute, contain feed mycelium, we choose test textiles made from natural plants. Among them, hazen textile stood out as our main material due to its low cost and high efficacy. During its growth, Mycelium feeds itself with cellulose and covers the textile. As we were recording the growth of mycelium, we witnessed the growth of the architecture itself. After having sterilized all the materials, we experimented with the mycelium wrapped with textiles as our prototype. We used the cable ties to arrange and fix the pins evenly outside the bags. As a result of a collective effort of cable ties and dowels, the expansion of mycelium bags was constrained in all dimensions. In this way, we control the strength, the elasticity, the thickness, and the uniformity of the models. To ensure the stability of the structures, we tested the limit of distortion of mycelium bags and explored the different possibilities of the structures by folding, twisting, and stretching the mycelium bags. We built a dark and damp greenhouse, which was suitable for the growth of mycelium. 
That is to say, we created a suitable environment for the life cycles of mycelium to happen. After growing for two weeks, mycelium started to reproduce on the textile. We then conducted a test with a large spill wall. Although they were situated in the same greenhouse, and despite our efforts to ensure the uniformity of the temperature and humidity, different parts of the wall tended to grow differently. These living organisms had been growing in an unpredictable way. The spores released from a chewed mushroom sprung out of the wall, rooted themselves on the OSB board, and then spread instantly. As part of the food and structure, the textile changed as the mycelium grew and was crowded gradually. The massive clusters of mushrooms, which reproduced rapidly, grew themselves into various shapes on the textile. This led us to the question, were all these complex and unpredictable procedures of designs accomplished by the designers or the architecture itself? From this, we began to think more about the specific application and life cycle of materials and create a sustainable ecosystem in the site. We set our sights on the Tilt Nature Reserve in Belgium. The rich mushroom species resources in the park became our main source of construction materials. Mushroom picking activities are held here every quarter, and the larger reserve lacks suitable tourist rest areas. Our proposal is to design huts in the protection, to become a space for tourists to relax, entertain, and dine. As a living hut, Mushrooms picked from the building can be directly used as ingredients for cooking. Mycelial walls are deformed by painting to create a closed space. We have designed different sized huts for different tourist groups. There are huts for one or two people and larger huts for a maximum of six people to rest in. The huts are supported with wooden frames, ensuring structural stability in the early stages of mycelial growth. The mycelium is then gradually consumed the substrate during the growth stage, making the structure more and more stable. The structural timber was cut by the CNC and transported to the site, where it would be used as a framework for the mycelium to absorb and grow. The mycelium huts are built directly on site with wooden structures, fixing their shapes. A greenhouse is then built around the hut to control various growing conditions ensuring optimal growth. After a two-week period, the greenhouse is removed so that the husk can be exposed to the natural environment to gradually dry out and stiffen up. The husks are scattered in various places in the reserve, and the natural texture of the mycelium building blends with the environment. To further push the possibilities made available from using mycelium as a building material, a living mycelium restaurant was designed. Made almost entirely from mycelium, the building is in a state of constant renewal, and the guests get to experience a unique moment within the life cycle of the building every visit. Not only is the restaurant made from mycelium, inside are several greenhouses that grow replacement parts. This makes the building almost literally alive in a continuous process of growth and renewal. In addition to the greenhouses inside, just a couple dozen meters away is a local mycelium production company. Through a partnership with the company, large mycelium parts which are too big to grow in-house can be grown nearby and easily transported to the restaurant for replacement. The restaurant is split up into multiple parts, each grown from a different mushroom species. This allows people to have a unique dining experience. To elevate the experience even more, some parts of the restaurant are kept alive and full of mushrooms which can be picked and served for guests right at their fingertips.
dry mycelium composites become the substitutes of foam and other heat-preserving materials with less carbon dioxide emission. Unplugged mushrooms become part of the decoration of the building, and mycelium stops breathing. At the end of its life, mycelium degrades in the soil and becomes part of nature again. Throughout its 20-year-long life cycle, it changes from one stage to another. It grows into maturity and dies and rots. Although the physical shape of the building has been demolished, the life of architecture continues in a different form in perpetuity.